I want to build a robot. What would it mean to build a robot? It's a good question. Uh, I also want to understand French. Let's say I want to understand French. What would it mean to understand French? So so esoteric, my goodness. And then, hmm, do you like me? What makes you think I like you? Just the, the conversations we have. They're so deep and thought-provoking. You, you, you confuse me. What makes you think that I confuse you? The, the questions that you ask. You, you take everything I say and you turn it around and you throw it against me, almost as if we're having a real meaningful conversation. Howdy, howdy. This is Mr. Potter. Uh, you've noticed we've done a little bit of chatting here with uh, our little friendly chatbot here. Um, a couple of things that have changed here is we've actually made it where if I tell it that I want to do something, it asks this question, what does it mean to do what I'm saying I want to do? And similarly, I, I anytime I have this you followed by this me, it's saying, you know, what makes you think that I, whatever, you. So we've actually adapted this magpie. You see we're on magpie four. We've adapted this magpie class to deal with these interactions that allow us to interact uh, asking these leading questions that actually pertain somewhat to what we're talking about. So remember in our last video we talked about this find keyword method. And the whole idea behind this find keyword method is that given a statement we can find out where a particular instance of mother or father or sister or brother or no. We can find the instance of these variables, where they show up. And if they show up, you know, with a space in front of and a space behind, then we know that that's a succinct idea and that we can reply to that succinct idea. Um, so we're doing something similar with this as well. Notice I still have the if statement.length is equal to zero, we want them to say something to us. If this if there's the word no anywhere in there, then we have the why so negative. If it's talking about our mother or our father, or sister, brother, then we want to know more about your family. But then I also see this down here. Uh, if find keyword for our statement, if it finds I want to, starting at position zero, if it finds that somewhere, then we've got this method called transform I want to statement, which gives our statement, would give us a reply that has something to do with it. So notice here where I've got this, I want to build a robot. This build a robot somehow gets passed on and I build the sentence, what would it mean to build a robot? Or if I say I want to understand French, then it says, what do you, what would it mean to understand French? So I want to take a look at this method, see exactly what's going on here. So in this transform I want to statement, here's the transform I want to statement. What it does is it takes the I want to blank and transforms it to, what would it mean to blank? So in other words, we have to find where I want to is in the statement. So we're doing our traditional statement dot trim just kind of cutting off the spaces in the front, the white space at the end. And then one other thing that we're doing is if we have punctuation at the end, we have got the statement.substring, statement.length is minus one. If the last char dot equals period, in other words, if we typed a period at the end of our statement, we're basically going to trim it off. Now, of course, it would be nice if I did something like or last char dot equals uh, question mark, or last char dot equals exclamation point. That would be nice because then, you know, however we reply, we'll just kind of peel off that last piece of punctuation. And what it's going to do is it's going to find the position of the keyword I want to. And this is going to tell us immediately where I want to starts. So I want to find the rest of the statement, everything after the I want to. And so we're using the substring method to do so. Notice that we're starting at PSN plus 9, and we're starting at PSN plus 9 because this string, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, is 9 characters long. And so what we're doing is we're starting immediately after the O in 2. And we're calling on trim again because there's probably a space between I want to 
and whatever we want to continue. So this trim gets rid of that space so we can force our own space there and say what would it mean to the rest of the statement and then we add our question mark on. Notice that because we took care of the punctuation that was at the end of our statement, the only punctuation we'll have at our statement is this question mark. So if I run this, let me go ahead and run this again. So I can say, uh, I want to eat some pizza. What would it mean to eat some pizza? Um, I want to visit the mall. What would it mean to visit the mall? I want to explore the uh, Australian Australian outback and hunt the wild gazebo. What would it mean to explore the Australian outback and hunt the wild gazebo? Notice that it's finding where I want to is and it's taking everything afterwards from here to here. It's removing the final piece of punctuation. It's removing this leading space here. And then it's taking this part of our statement, the everything from the to, and it's putting it on here. I could even say, sometimes I want to choke you. What would it mean to choke you? So it's not perfect, but at least it gets the idea that it takes what we've said and it kind of turns it around so that we can interact with the machine. It's kind of a jumping off point for us to say, well, it means I want to place my hands around your neck. Hmm. What would it mean to place my hands around your neck? Because there I am again using the phrase, I want to. So it's interesting and it's this novel idea that it actually responds to something that I'm trying to say. Remember that there was something else that we did here. Um, notice I had enter and it said say something please. Um, if I ended up saying, uh, you know, do you want to go to the movies with me? And it says, what makes you think that I want to go to the movies with you? It takes this to go to the movies with, which was between the you and me up here, and builds this phrase. So I want to take a look at that in our magpie. We've got this transform you me statement method that does this, this you something me, and transforms it into the statement, what makes you think that I blank you? So we're going to call on that in our uh, get response method. It's going to look for the instance of you starting at the beginning, and it's going to call that place position. And then if position is greater than or equal to zero, and we're looking for where me shows up, and me has to show up anywhere beyond PSN. So if me shows up anywhere beyond PSN and we had a U, then I know I've got a U and then some word, some phrase, some something, and then the word me, and so we can call on this transform you me statement. And the way we transform it is very similar to how we transformed the previous I want to statements. So I'm going to trim the statement, again, getting rid of any white space, that way we know we're only dealing with characters. And then I'm going to get the substring, find out what the last character is, and again, I probably want to put these tweaks that I did up here. Let's go ahead and copy all these characters. So I've got if last char is a period, or last char is a question mark, or last char is an exclamation point, then we want to substring, we want to peel that one off. So we go from zero to the statement dot length minus one. I want to find the position of you, I want to find the position of me, and I want everything in between. So I'm using the substring method again, starting at position of you plus three, and that's because the word Y-O-U is three letters long, and ending at position of me. Now, of course, that's going to include the space after the U and the space before me, so we're going to call on trim again. And then we've got the return, what makes you think I, rest of statement, U. Notice that we've trimmed the spaces off and then we end up putting them back. 
And so it's just a matter of us making sure that the word's phrased exactly the way we want it. So what I want to do in this video is I want to add one more of these types of statements. Um, what I want to do is I want to add the response. Let's go ahead and do, uh, if this is true, then do this. And so what I really need to do is I really need to, to kind of put another else if up here. So let's get rid of this part here. So I'm going to say if uh, find keyword for statement and I want to do I hate starting at the beginning. But if that is greater than or equal to zero, then we're going to do the following code. This says that we need to do some type of transformation here. So we're going to uh, transform I hate something to what's so bad about something. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to follow the same idea like we did for the I want to, because the I want to had anything that was following the I want to and called on this. So I'm going to call on this response gets transform I hate statement given our statement. So we're actually going to be modeling our output from the, the transformation of the I want to statement. So I'm going to go down here and kind of model this statement. So private string uh, transform I hate statement with a string statement. And again, the first thing we want to do is to get rid of uh, white space and ending punctuation. So we're going to have the statement get statement dot trim. Again, that gets rid of the white space. And then I want to find out the last character. So string last char get statement dot substring. And I want to do this from statement dot length minus one. Just get the last element of the thing. And if and of course, this is basically what we had up here. If the last char was a period or a question mark or an exclamation point. So if that's true, then we want to say that uh, statement gets statement dot substring starting at zero and ending at statement dot length minus one, basically stopping one short from the end. And then I want to say int PSN is going to be equal to find keyword for the statement. I want to find where I hate is starting at position zero. And I want to find everything after that. So notice that I hate is one, two, three, four, five, six positions away from the beginning. So our string rest of statement is going to be equal to statement dot substring starting at PSN plus six dot trim. So that takes care of any leading spaces and ending spaces after the I hate. And I want to return. What did I say I wanted to return? Uh, what's so bad about something? So I want to return what's so bad about plus the rest of statement plus space question mark. So I need to have a space here after this about because I just trimmed any leading spaces we might have. So let's go ahead and compile this, make sure it works correctly. That compiles well. So we'll go ahead and run this. So if I do this, so hello, let's talk. Uh, I don't feel like talking. I hate talking. What's so bad about talking? 
I hate sharing my feelings. What's so bad about sharing my feelings? Probably should do something here to change these pronouns. That might be something that we could do in a later method, just any time that this rest of statement that we're dealing with, the mine should be transformed to yours, and the yours should be transformed to mine or me. That's pretty difficult stuff to do. Um, I hate sharing my feelings because I hate feeling vulnerable. What's so bad about feeling vulnerable? Nothing, I guess. I do. I like talking to you. Hmm. It would be really good if we added something here that whenever I said I like, that it would reply to me about what it is that I like. I think I'll leave that as an exercise for y'all. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.